friends, it's Sandra and I've got a Disney craft project for you today. So welcome to the channel, Creatively Sandra, and if you do Disney crafts or aspire to do Disney crafts, you've come to the right place. So go ahead and subscribe and there'll be more projects to come. Today we're going to be focusing on a Disney themed shadow box, which will be a great decor addition to any Disney collection, makes a great gift, and this is a super simple project. So if you are new to crafting, this is a great one to get started with. I have a kit and I purchased this kit from scrapbook.com and it's by a company Doodlebugs Designs and it's a Disney themed kit. It's called Fun in the Park. It's not licensed Disney, but it's got some Disney icon-ish items and it's the, certainly the colors of Disney, so it makes a perfect addition to your Disney decor. The great part about this is it is super simple. Most of the items are in the kit with just a few things we need to have in addition, but it comes together really quickly. And for such a simple project, the outcome is super cute and stunning. And like I said, it's going to look great on your wall or give as a gift. It'll be greatly appreciated. Let's get started. Okay, so as I said, the kit is complete with almost everything you need except for a few um, common supplies. So this kit is made by Doodlebug, Doodlebug Designs. They are the maker. This was purchased on scrapbook.com, as I said, and I will uh, link to the kit below where you can purchase. It is a shadow box insert kit. So on the site, you can also purchase a eight by eight frame to go with it. And that's what this is gonna get inserted to. You don't have to, you could just hang it on the wall um, or on your pin board or something like that without a frame. But I chose to get a frame on my own instead of purchasing the one that was on scrapbook.com just because I got a good deal getting it at Michael's. So this is the frame I chose. This actually came in a three pack um, and I think it was maybe like $29.99, but then it was buy one, get one free. And so I bought a, another frame that I needed as well. And these were available in black and white. They may have even had brown, but it's just an 8x8 um, display case. So this will be perfect to put our completed project in. The other supplies you will need are a scissors. And this is more so about the adhesive we use and not about the project kit because there's not much to kit here, to cut here. A, um, some type of adhesive. So I have a, this is like a double-sided tape adhesive. And then I also have a liquid adhesive I'll be using. So I'm using Nouveau Clear Drying Craft Glue. It doesn't really matter that it's clear because everything we're going to be sticking the glue under is opaque so you can use any type of white glue um, that you normally use for your paper crafting or other projects again this could be used or not i may just stick to the um the liquid glue that might be easier and then i also like to use a tweezers um just to get in some of the um sorry we've got a lot of glare there just to get in some of the um, smaller spaces i'll use my tweezers to place down some of the smaller elements and lastly, you need one cut. Now you could do this without a paper trimmer, but I also, um, I do have a paper trimmer, so I'm going to use that to cut down the one sheet we need to do. And this is, just happens to be a Stampin' Up paper trimmer. You can do this anywhere. You get a paper trimmer at any craft store, um, including like Walmart, Target, etc. cetera. But, um, you can also do this without a paper trimmer. So let's jump into the kit contents and see what's in here. Oh, sorry, one last thing. We're going to need some um, foam tape, which is a double-sided tape that has foam in the middle and it's used for popping things up. So giving it a little dimension. Um, we will be using different kinds because I just happen to have a lot of different ones on hand, scraps of ones left. And so I'll, I'll try to use up some of those. But if you need to purchase it, there is at the Dollar Store. The Dollar Tree sells a um, Crafter Square brand pop dot tape. And this one comes with three sizes of tape. So there's, there's a, I believe, a quarter inch, three quarter, and maybe an inch thickness. And I'm probably given the wrong dimensions there. There it is. Um, half an inch, 
a quarter inch, and 0.37. So a couple different varieties, but they're all the same thickness on the as far as how much is raised up. So that will work well. They also sell these pop dot adhesive squares, and those can be used as well. So whatever you're comfortable with using or already have at home. So I'm going to pull some of these out of the way and we're going to look into what's included in the kit. So first of all, in the kit, the things that make this Disney-esque, it's not Disney branded. It is branded as a fun at the park kit, um, but it's the colors of Disney. It's some of the fun icons of Disney. Not exactly, but enough to look Disney-like. So they're able to do that without a without having a Disney license. So that's that's great and that's fun. And there's lots of other products they have for Doodlebug designs with this fun at the park theme for scrapbooking, card making, etc. So you can try your hand at that as well and that's even available on the site that I'll be referring you to. But just looking at some of the icons, you know, we have a castle, we have a boat that's kind of like the Jungle Cruise boat, we have the hippo, we have some teacups, we have a gondola or what might be um, themed as the, the monorail. We've got some um, bows like Minnie Mouse's bows. We've got that uh, red and white polka dots that's um, Minnie Mouse's theme. And then we've also got some snacks. We've got pretzels and, and snow cones and corn dogs and maybe that's a Dole Whip and Disney popcorn. We've got a Main Street lamp post, some hand sanitizer and a mask because that's been appropriate for the last two years. Um, so let's dive into what's in the package now. And this will go a little faster once we get started. I just want to be able to walk you through the contents. So as I mentioned, you've got sprinkles that are enamel, uh, like enamel dots, and they are in the shape of stars. We've got some in the shape of hearts. And again, with all of the color theming, we've got a little um, castle, and that castle is three-dimensional. I'll take it out of here so you can see that as well. So three-dimensional castle, you see we've got some pop-up elements there, and that's kind of what we're doing with the pop-up dots that we're going to be using to put the kit together. We've got another sheet of stickers that are all the references that I pointed out on the front of the kit, but also some extras. So when you finish this, you will have some things left over, like, for example, this backpack or the ticket booth or the caramel apple. We didn't use any of those in the um, for the project. So those will be fun leftovers to use on cards. If you scrapbook um, on your trades for pins, you can just fancy up your envelope. Okay, so this is just listing the contents and that's our original um, insert for our package. This is the template we're going to follow. So this gives us um, everything that we're going to be putting down on the image. And you'll see the X's are referring to anywhere we have something to be popped up. And in this case, the S's are referring to, and I'm referring to the instructions down here, the S's indicate sprinkles. And those sprinkles are the ones that are in these packages, whether it's a heart shape or a star, these are referred to as shape sprinkles. So S for sprinkles, X for pop-up, and then everything else will be glued down flat. Okay, the other piece of this is you have a, um, a white piece of cardstock. You also have a sheet of vellum. Now the vellum is a bit transparent, not completely see-through, but close. And we're going to be working on the vellum, and then our final project is going to land on the white cardstock. So I'm going to set this one aside. The vellum we want to first cut to an 8 by 8 size. So our entire project, I showed you the frame, and this is all going to fit within an 8 by 8 size. So that's the first step we're going to do. So I will bring in my paper trimmer. And for those of you who don't have a paper trimmer, you can take a ruler, and let me just grab a ruler and show you. It's a little bit hard to see on the 
um, the mat I have here, maybe if we put it under over top of the white paper. So you could just measure out eight inches. I have kind of a large ruler here. So you can measure eight inches, mark it off this way. Again, measure eight inches this way, mark that off, and then pencil or, you know, draw a pencil line each way and cut out your image. It won't matter too much. You can go a little bit outside. Once you put it in your frame, it'll fit in there nicely and you will see um, that it doesn't have to be exactly perfect to still make a beautiful display. When we're using this paper trimmer, the arm has to stick out and my paper trimmer is gonna go a little out of the camera range. I'll try to get it in here. This is just, like I said, one I use that I have on hand and it measures very easily um, eight inches. I'm gonna set the paper at eight inches and swipe, that cuts the first piece. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So I'm really cutting off three inches of one end and a half an inch of the other end. And so you can also choose to measure it that way. But again, our goal is to get an eight by eight sheet of the vellum paper. So we'll set aside our trimmer and then we're gonna bring our template back in. So let's focus on the middle here. So what we want to do is bring that vellum piece and fit it exactly in the square here. And that's gonna tell us everything we need to put on the vellum. It gives us the template underneath that we can see through and place our pieces appropriately. Now, what you wanna do is be able to tape this down so that um, it doesn't move and you can follow the template there without you know, messing up moving your paper. So we're just gonna use a little bit of washi tape. If you don't have washi tape, um, the blue painter's tape could work. Uh, the one thing you want to do, regardless of the type of tape you're using, and washi tape, if you're not familiar, is kind of a, um, a low tack tape, and it sticks, but it's it can be peeled up without ruining your project. So um, I have all kinds of washi tape in fun colors. It's fun to decorate envelopes. It's fun to use in scrapbook pages and card making. Um, all kinds of things. So just any random washi tape. I do like to either run it on my skin, tape it down. It pulls up some of the oils of my skin and it makes it even less tacky. The other thing you can do, um, I can't do it on camera, but you can run it like on your shirt or a pair of jeans that gives it adds a little bit of lint so it's not too tacky. So what I wanna do is tape down the vellum to the project sheet, which has my template. And so I'm gonna grab another piece. Now they'll tell you to tape maybe at the top and bottom. What I found is taping on the top two corners is great because in some places it might be hard to see what the image is and um, you may find that you need to lift up your vellum and look at the brighter image to see where things go. So, um, I think it's nice to have the tape at the top like that and then be able to flip this up and down as needed. Okay, so that is what we're starting with. I'm gonna again bring in some of our pieces and pull out, get things out of the wrapper so we have our castle and that's gonna go in the middle um, and that's gonna get stuck straight down because it already has dimension. So that's one of the items that doesn't have an X on it and we'll be able to just glue straight down. And when I say glue, I think this one is actually a sticker and we'll check that out and test that out. And we'll be able to um, just put that down. I do see it looks like the other pieces of this. So there's also two small stickers that kind of represent fireworks. And those will also go on the image. It looks like one gets popped up and the other one does not. The sprinkles, so the hearts and the stars, I'm gonna set those over here. Those we'll use last. We're going to use the castle and other things that are gonna lay flat first, and then we'll start to pop up some items as well. I am going to um, show you the one of the pop-ups first though, before we get into the rest of the flat items, just so you see how that works with whatever double 
sided foam tape you're using. So let's go ahead and pull an image. That one gets popped up. That's a small one that gets popped up. Let's start with the bow. So for each of these, you'll need to find the image on the coordinating sticker sheet to see what you're placing. And we're ready to just start putting stuff down. So I'm going to peel off the bow. I'm going to take my um, foam tape and you just want to cut a piece that's going to fit in there without showing. So it might be two smaller pieces. This may be a good place to use a, I have these that are a square dot or a round dot. It really doesn't matter as long as it doesn't show. I'm setting that down and I probably should have cut my foam tape before I um, pulled that off the sticker sheet, but that's okay. So I've got two small pieces I'm going to use to try and cover most of the bow. And you'll find like you wanna kinda of get some foam in the middle and make sure you don't have, you know, if it's a wide image, you wanna make sure it doesn't fall short in the middle or too much on the sides, but that's about it. That's really all you need. So we're gonna peel off the other side. So when you peel the uh, tape off the roll, one side, the adhesive's already exposed, the other side has this white cover on it so you could just peel those back and then we're just going to go ahead and place down our first piece there voila that's it let's do one of the um fireworks pieces to get started on the flat ones so we've got one that's going to be flat and one that's going to be raised up i'll lift this up again so that we you can see what i'm talking about if you're not able to see the x's through the vellum on the camera the first one is the one that's gonna lay flat, and it doesn't have to be in perfect order or shape. And I'm gonna um, stop talking for a bit, go on and try to get all of our flat pieces on, and then we'll come back and work on some more of the raised pieces. Okay, at this point, I think we have all of our shapes that are either flat or not a sprinkle. Um, all of them are on there. I might have missed one star there. We'll check on that. And actually, I didn't. I've got that on there. So we're set on all those. So now we want to start with some of our items that we are popping up. So again, those are all the items with the X on it. So let's get started. For this part, you'll see I had a really thin portion on the pretzel, and I really need to hide my adhesive behind that. So what I've done is just cut those, that one strip of adhesive, into three narrower strips, and that's going to be just fine. And then I'll peel my tape off the other end of the adhesive cover and I'll be able to stick this down just fine with no adhesive showing. So even if you don't have all sizes of the adhesive, you will be able to complete that. So I think we now have all of our pieces that are to be popped up. We forgot one there. We have a balloon maybe. Let's go ahead and just add him really quickly as the last pop-up piece and then we'll see where we're at everything else on here is marked with an s i believe just taking a quick scan s s s so these are now all of our sprinkles there is one little guy that's 
just a stick down heart that we missed and I'll add him as well. Okay, now on to the sprinkles. I'll start with the hearts. And so I think we have everything except a small piece of popcorn here. Oop, one more star. I've got a yellow star. And we'll pull off our little piece of popcorn with a smiley face and add him and voila, we are complete. But as I mentioned, you have quite a few bits left over to use on other projects and that's kind of fun. And lots of sprinkles left as well. Again, you can use these to decorate a pin board, to decorate um, packages you mail out, cards you make, etc. So let's take all of this out of the way and look at our finished project or our finished vellum square here. So now, as I mentioned, you can peel back this washi tape very easily and dispose of it, and it does not affect your paper. Make sure you pre-treat it, like I said, either on your hand or your jeans or your shirt to get a, um, to get it a little less tacky. So, as you can see, our circle is full. Let's pull this out of the way and see what that looks like. And then let's go ahead and put the white paper behind it. All right, so this is beautiful. So fun, so dimensional. It's got a lot of character with everything going on here and all the different levels. Um, a little bit of the enamel, a little bit of, of pop-up, some things flat. And you can do anything else you want to. You can even add glitter to a piece. You could add glitter for the sprinkles on your snow cone. You could um, change the color of things, add a little clear lacquer on the glasses to make those sparkle. Just the, and the possibilities are endless. But just doing it as is, as the project states, is a beautiful work of art and so easy, so simple, something you can do with the kids, something you could do just for a quick project as a gift or to decorate your own Disney wall. I'm going to go ahead and proceed and get this in the frame and we'll come back and see the final product. One more thing I did want to mention before the final product is we do also need to cut down the white sheet to also be eight and a half or eight by eight, excuse me. So we'll again Cut at eight inches and eight inches again. And this will be the backing for our vellum piece when we go into the photo frame. Okay, so you made it through to the end of the project and now it's time for the reveal. So I've added our project into the frame the 8x8 frame and here is the end result. We do have a little bit of glare because it's glass in there. I did show you the, um, hopefully you saw the finished product unframed, so a little bit away from the glare, but is this not the cutest? This is great. It'll go great with my Disney decor. Um, I may even get another one to do as a gift because it's it's adorable. I have extra frames because as I mentioned, I bought them in a three pack. They do have other themes as well. So if it's you want to try something besides Disney, there's a, a jungle theme and maybe a nursery theme and there's even a scrapbooking theme, um, crafting theme if you're into that. So we're focused on Disney today, but lots more um, available. And as I mentioned, there'll be links below to this specific product and the site where I got it, as well as some suggestions for some of the tools and items that we use today in the project. So I hope you enjoyed that. As I mentioned, go ahead and subscribe if you're looking forward to more Disney crafts and tell me what you liked about this craft. Is it something you'd like to try? Is it something great for a beginner? Were you intimidated by it? Um, and what Disney crafts do you do? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. See you next time.